Hi there, this is Jen, and thank you so much for joining me over here on the Create and Inkspire web page. I am so happy that you can join me. Today I'm going to share with you how to create two mixed media cards. And for both of these cards, I will be using our Tessa watercolor paper. So I'm gonna show you how to create the backgrounds and then I will assemble the entire card. I am using this Ink on 3 Beautiful stamp, which is a new release. And I will also be using several stencils. And so for the first card, I wanted to create a card that was something that with items you had in your stash. Um, I know not everybody has shakers, which is something that I really enjoy using on mixed media cards. So I'm just going to use some of my Distrex Oxides. So I am using Picked Raspberry, Ripe Persimmon, Twisted Citron, and Wilted Violet. And I'm going to take the uh, Picked Raspberry and the Ripe Persimmon and put them on a piece of leftover plastic packaging and I am mixing those colors together to try and get uh, more of a coral color and so I go ahead and mix that with my paintbrush and then I will turn that piece of plastic over onto my watercolor panel where I will be doing uh, some ink smushing and after this first color I go ahead and just decide to use my craft mat and so I'm going to take each of the colors and ink that craft mat up and then spray that with water and then I'm just turning over my panel and dipping that panel into the ink. Um, I do end up drying in between the colors just to make sure that I don't get an ugly color that I don't want. So I'll go ahead and dry in between um, each of the colors that I'm using and then repeat the process for all of the colors and pretty much randomly but not randomly putting the colors on my panel. Um, that's why I keep flipping it over to see where I want color or where I need more color. Um, and really, you could use any um, coloring medium that you wanted. You could use watercolor, you could use the oxide sprays or some other form of sprays. Um, for this card, I am doing the layers with the color first. And on the second card, I will show you um, the color last. So um, the order that this card is going in is going to be color and then a stamping and then texture and then a focal point. And those are the four things that I try and incorporate on my mixed media cards, um, is to make sure that there are at least those layers. Um, and there are different items that you can use for those layers. So here I'm stamping up this stamp from the um, Ink on 3 stamp set. And so I'm just gonna take my black Versafine and stamp up those florals and some of the leaves. And then I'm taking this Prima set and this little circle just has uh, a little bit of writing in it. So I'm stamping it off on a piece of paper and then stamping it on my background so that it is not too dark. Um, and then the texture that I'm gonna use for this card is this modeling paste, which is uh, semi-opaque. So some of the areas you can see through and some of them you can't. Um, and you can put this on as thick or thin as you want it. I try to go a little bit thicker on some areas and then some are a little bit thinner. And one of the great things about mixed media is it's really easy to hide areas that you don't like particularly. And so when I'm applying the paste, I wasn't loving the leaves up in that right hand corner. So I put paste over it. And so only a little bit of them peek through. But when I put on paste, I always put it in three areas. So you'll notice I have it on the right hand corner and then the bottom kind of right and then on the left hand side there's a little bit. Next I'm taking a piece of heat resistant acetate and I'm taking my VersaFine Black again and I am stamping up that <clears throat> floral again on this piece of acetate and then I will take some clear embossing powder and cover that image. Um, you can also use if you wanted a darker image a, a black embossing powder which would darken up that image a little bit and then I went ahead and I fussy cut that piece of acetate out. And then, and when I adhere this, I'm gonna use a glue dot as well as a small round um, foam. Um, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and take my white gel pen and add some details to the center of the flower. 
And then I'm going to take my black micron pin and go around the flower and different areas of the card and just add some detail. I think black a lot of times um, really makes the color of your card pop out. And so I'm taking that and I'm I'm going around in circles on some of the little watermarks that are on the flower and on the card and then I'm also using it to um, outline some of the textured um, paste from the stencil. And then to adhere the card to my card base I'm just using uh, some glitter glue. And I'm using uh, liquid glue to adhere this because um, I did the ink smushing on that panel so it didn't warp too much and so that glue should do a good job of keeping that adhered to the card base. Um, and then next I'm going to take some black gouache and water that down and then just take a paintbrush and do some black ink splatters um, over the card. And then for the sentiment I went ahead and I took some black cardstock and heat embossed um, some white embossing powder and for the middle portion, um, as I mentioned, I used a glue dot as well as a small um, round foam to pop that up. And to cover that up, I went ahead and put the word hello there. So it says, hello, be beautiful, uh, friend. And that will complete that card. I um, really love this card. I think the colors... I just love the way it turned out um, and it doesn't always turn out the way that I want it so I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. Um, I hope you like this card as well. It was not, I know it seems like a lot of steps but um, it wasn't really too bad. It probably took me about uh, a half an hour without drying time so you want to make sure that your paste is completely dry before you start working on um, other areas of the card, but um, really it didn't take that long. So um, it's pretty easy to do. Um, for this next card, I am again using an Arteza watercolor panel, and then I am using this Hero Arts stamp, and um, I went ahead and used my Versamark ink to spread that ink all over that stamp. <laughs> and um, I'm not using the stamp full on the panel. I'm just doing several areas of the stamp because I don't want an entire stamped image. And I'm gonna go ahead and use gold embossing powder. And I like to use either gold or silver embossing powder, especially if I'm putting paste over the top just because I really love the way that the embossing powder kind of um, peeks through if you're using a stencil with paste, those little um, crevices where the stencil is blank, I guess, for lack of uh, another word. <laughs> and so um, the only problem I had with this is that I think it's because it's the watercolor paper that embossing did not raise up as much as um, it would have raised up if it was on a smoother cardstock. Um, so I went through several of my stencils. I wasn't really sure which one I was going to use, and I finally decided on this stencil, which is a woodware stencil, and it's called Mica Mask. And then I am using some paper texture paste. I really love this paste because it's totally opaque. You can't see through it, and um, I really like the texture of it. Um, so for this card, you'll notice I am not going to do the color until last. So I'm doing um, embossing first and then um, texture and then I'll do my color. Um, if I was going to do any stamping on this, I would do it um, probably before I did the um, gold embossing. Um, but I am not doing any stamping directly on this panel. Um, so for this background, I chose to use some of my favorites, which are the shakers. So these are Lindy's Magical Shakers, and I just grabbed some yellows, some oranges, and reds, and pinks. Um, and I'm basically just spreading the color around um, and spritzing it with water, and then taking my uh, paintbrush to kind of get those little areas to either distribute the paint where I want it or to break up some of the little powdery um, pieces that don't totally dissolve in the water. And I wanted to mention um, that if you have some watercolor paper that you don't really like, either cheap watercolor paper or just stuff you don't like using for regular watercolors, um, mixed media cards are a great way to use those up. 
And so that's why a lot of times I use this Arteza. I'm not saying Arteza watercolor is cheap. Um, I just don't prefer it. Um, there are several other brands that I would rather use than this. Um, and I had bought it, I don't know, for some reason, just to see um, how it worked. And so uh, I've been using it a lot um, for this type of card because um, it is a thicker and it will handle water. Um, but And I do add a lot of water to this card. Um, and so I go ahead and I dry the panel a little bit with my heat tool and then I'm going to take a baby wipe and blot off the color. You don't want to rub the panel because it will just not destroy the fibers, but it will um, disturb the fibers of the paper and it might end up with uh, little balls of paper that you don't want and so um, I just blotted that with a baby wipe so that that um, embossed image shines through. Um, I'm going to take my gold embossing powder again so I took a piece of cardstock and my Versamark ink and I just spread that on a piece of cardstock and um, put my embossing powder over that and heated it up. And then I'm going to take this Alta New die. It is a fairly delicate die and I actually did I uh, end up tearing it a little bit when um, I got, took it out of the die, the metal die piece. So I'm going to take this U um, die and stack it three times and um, that will cover that area of the die cut that tore. And the panel was pretty warped and I did not want to run it through my Big Shot, which is what I would normally do to uh, flatten it out a panel that's kind of warped because of the texture on it. I didn't want to flatten that texture out. So I'm using a piece of double-sided adhesive to adhere that to my card panel. And um, that seems to work pretty well, though it does t bend up a little still. Um, and then I'm gonna take my Red Top Fine Line glue and go ahead and uh, glue the back of the stacked sentiment. I also did add some gold acrylic um, splatter and then the sentiment strip says got this so the card says you got this and i believe that you got this so if you are on the fence about whether to do a mixed media or you've never done it and it's something that interests you um, i say go for it it is a lot of fun and if you do make some mixed media cards i would love 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 to see them so if you are on Instagram, you can use the hashtag create and inkspire, um, and that will tag your project. Um, and that is it for me. I thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to spend with me, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks so much.